All right. One, two. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our webinar today. It's great to have you all here. If you could use the chat box to say hello, um, I'd love to hear where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, maybe even um, put in the chat box something you're wanting to get out of today's webinar. Um, we'll let people filter through here for a few minutes. I am tuning in from our Portland, Oregon campus today. It's a beautiful fall day. The sun is shining. Hello from Vermont, North Carolina, Florida, Canada. <laughs> Sean, you're already getting a shout out. <laughs> Wisconsin. Asheville, North Carolina. We have folks from all over the place tuning in today. It is so great to have you all here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started since we just have an hour today and we have a lot to cover. Again, welcome to how to build a successful wellness coaching business from scratch. I am your host today, Felicia Royce. I am the Director of Alumni and Career Services here at ACHS, and I'm being joined today by Gina Schnepps. Uh, she is our Marketing Manager. She's going to be behind the scenes today, making sure that everything is running smoothly. She's going to be monitoring the chat box. Um, so if you have any issues at all um, with technology, um, please let us know, and Gina can help out with that. Um, we do have two very special guests uh, joining us as well. Some of you might know these names. Sean Hellum, he is a professor for some of our business and wellness coaching courses here at ACHS. And Dr. Janet Ludwig, our professor and dean of integrative health and nutrition, they're going to be here just as... Um, other professionals in the field, um, you know, answering some of your questions, and we're super happy to have them here today. Yes, Damari, this is going to be recorded, and everyone who is registered is going to get uh, this recording emailed to them later today. All right, so starting off with ACHS's mission and vision, our mission is to lead the advancement of evidence-based integrative health and wellness education through experiential online learning and sustainable practices. Our vision is integrative health and wellness education is accessible to global communities, promoting sustainable and healthy futures for all. We always like to tie everything back to our mission and vision here. So before we get started today, um, I just wanted to go over a few agenda items and housekeeping. Um, uh, I already said this before, but if you registered, um, you will get a recording of this webinar, usually a few hours after the webinar ends. So keep a lookout for that. Um, you will notice that all of your lines have been muted. That is because we are recording this webinar. Um, that being said, we want this to be really fun and engaging. So please don't hesitate to use the, the chat box, put in your questions in there, um, have a dialogue in there. We are going to start with our panelist interview and we will be fielding some questions during that interview process. And then at the end, we will have some time for Q&A. If for some reason we don't get to your question today, or if your question's a little more in depth than what we can cover in our webinar, um, I do get um, a list of all of the questions and I will reach out to you directly and individually. So yes, please use that chat box as much as possible. So without further ado, I wanna introduce you to today's panelist. This is Colleen Robinson. Um, she graduated with ACHS with the MS, the master's degree in complementary alternative medicine. Um, this program is now the MS in Integrative Health Sciences. Um, she is nationally board certified in health and wellness coaching, and she is the owner and operator of Simper Wellness LLC. We are so excited to have Colleen here today. And Colleen, if you could just give us a brief introduction about yourself and a little bit about your business, I'd love to hear it. And I'm sure everyone here would love to hear more about you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Felicia. So 
Um, as mentioned, I did a master's program with ACHS, and I actually did that in 2020. I did it in one year. When my job ended, I was doing um, health and wellness coaching in a corporate setting, and I decided since everything was shut down, it made sense to go back to school, um, not knowing where things would go from there. And actually, I've had an LLC, let's see, since 20. 15, I believe. And I started that just doing personal training. And I just wanted to have that LLC just to look more professional, um, to stand apart from others that maybe were sole proprietors. Semper wellness is meaning always well. I'm a retired Marine. I did an early retirement. So I did 15 years. So our motto in the Marine Corps is Semper Fi. And I just wanted to integrate something Marine Corps related within my business title. And what I offer is holistic health and wellness coaching, which encompasses everything from stress management, exercise, nutrition, uh, work-life balance, healthy eating, um, sleep. Also, could be I could talk a little bit with the client about alcohol and tobacco cessation. However, that's not something that I specialize in, but if that's something that they want to work towards, we certainly would talk through those things because we just want to look at everybody as, you know, that holistic approach because it's not just about what we're eating or we're moving. There's so many aspects to our health and wellness, as we all know. Um, so I also offer, besides the health and wellness coaching, I do group exercise. Um, mainly a boot camp and aqua fitness at a couple of different locations and independently contracting. Um, I'm at a couple resorts that are partnered together and a country club. I also do some business out of my house. So I'm kind of in several different locations and other things that I offer are cleaning out your pantry, refrigerator, taking people grocery shopping. Um, we can also do it virtually if they're in their kitchen, but it's preferable definitely to be either at their house or videoing, looking at what they have. Um, I like them to show me what they're purchasing to make it just more realistic. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all that. You offer so many amazing services. Um, so I'm sure your clients are so happy that you have so many things to offer to them. Um, and so this is going to kind of enter into our question kind of interview process with Colleen. We have some questions we're going to ask Colleen, and um, this is a great time to ask your own questions as well. And we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. Um, but starting with um, Colleen, I'd love to know more about uh, what were the most beneficial tools and resources, including any classes that you might have taken at ACHS that you used specifically when you were building your holistic business? So I do want to start off with saying I absolutely love HDHS. Um, I have an aunt that was living in Portland, and I didn't know that ACHS was only online. So I went to visit her. I'm sorry, there's a plane flying. Um, I went to visit her and I went into the ACHS building. I was a little saddened to see that there were there was not, you know, in person classes, but um so I, I got a little bit of, you know, hands on when I when I got there and I was just extremely inspired by all of the professors that I had. because uh, I'd previously done another program at another college, another master's program, but ACHS made it really feel as if we were in class. However, I've never done in class um, college before. I've only done online, so I don't really have much to compare, but I certainly felt, you know, as part of a team um, and just even being reached out to as an alumni. Um, so with that being said, my very favorite class was the stress management um, and emotional health, which was, I figured it out. It was Professor Abby Skinner. I'm not sure if she's still with HES. Yeah, she is. Okay. She was absolutely amazing. Um, I used to think that the most important part that people should work on on their health, which I don't tell people what they need to work on, um, they tell me. However, I, in my head, thought it was nutrition. But after taking that class, I realized if you do not manage your stress, you're not getting the sleep that you need, you're not going to be able to make those healthy choices, 
uh, the next day with your exercise, nutrition, you're not going to have that energy to work out or prepare your healthy meals. So I was just blown away by um, just the thought process of stress management. And I think we all know in America, there are so many people extremely stressed, overbooked, and they're very unhealthy. And stress can make you go through some weird things, which I went through my own little, um, I don't know if you want to say little, but I had a little bit of a breakdown when I was in the Marine Corps because I decided I had to do a bachelor's degree full-time while I was active duty, while traveling, while in a, um, a relationship. And then I also was teaching group fitness on the side. And I got into a little bit of a crash, which is what led me towards the holistic, um, naturopathic way of living. So that would be my first class, um, or my, I guess, uh, the most beneficial class for me. It just changed my whole mindset. Yeah, I can imagine going through a process yourself really makes you compassionate for others that you work with that are overbooked and overscheduled. Um, we had a couple of questions come up that I would love to get. Um, and again, um, Sean or Dr. Ludwig, if you want to, um, you know, chime in on this. But um, Angela asked, how did you develop your content? Do you use workbooks or assessments? Um, can you talk a little, little bit about some of the, maybe the forms or the workbooks or anything that you might use with your clients that have been beneficial? That's a great question. So um, when I was working, so I worked at Anthem and I was working for a contract company called Premise Health, where they do corporate wellness. And when I found out my job was ending, I decided I needed to use some of the information that we were using there, some of the lifestyle assessments, um, the the, uh, the wellness vision worksheet I actually got from the organization that I got certified with before I did the national board. So I've actually really put together a lot of um, my forms from different continuing education courses that I've done, um, the job that I had, and you know, created my own also for my, um, it's not a contract. I, I definitely am careful to talk to my clients about you're not signing a contract, um, but an agreement, my coaching agreement, I used verbiage through the ICF and the and, um, National Board of Health and Wellness Coaching. I actually used their whole shell. I just changed a couple things on it. So that would be, um, I didn't want to, you know, why recreate the wheel is what I believe. It's, Absolutely. You can't keep people's labels on and things like that. And, you know, if it's copyright, you certainly have to give that credit. Um, but that's that's how I came up with my my forms. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and I do want to address Iris's question. What's the difference between this and a nurse coach? Uh, if I'm understanding correctly, there is holistic nursing out there. Um, that is an RN program. So typically that's done at a community college or a specific freestanding school that offers nursing specifically. We do not offer that here at ACHS. Not sure if that's your question, but that would be more of an RN track. Um, and if you want to talk more about that after the webinar, we can definitely set that up. Um, okay, well, moving on. Um, let's see our next question here. Uh, one of our fan favorites. What is your favorite networking technique? Okay, um, I did want to add something to the last question, and then I'll get to the networking part. So um, other beneficial resources, I had a SCORE mentor. So if you just Google SCORE mentorship, um, there's SCORE mentors in every area of the United States. I don't know about overseas, and some people meet virtually, some are in person, and they will pair you up with somebody that is in the same type of field, and it's free. Um, so these are business owners that are giving up executive, um, owners of different companies, corporations, whatever, um, that are giving up their time to help mentor small business owners. Also the small business association, which are all over the United States. Some States, like I actually, I forgot to tell you, I live in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, and we actually have a, um, location we can go in person and they also have different sections if you're a veteran, if you're a women-owned business, um, and then, you know, generally you don't have to be within any of those specific um, um, titles. 
And those are also free. I got a lot of good information there. They have a lot of online classes that are free as well. So I would look up their site, Small Business Administration. And there are just other conferences that I've gone to. Um, I just kept seeking more and more. I, I love knowledge. Um, so that would be different resources. Um, continuing education when you start after you get board certified or you do your certification prior to the board certified, there's you have to do continuing education. And from there, you'll find out about different courses, conferences. So just continuing, you know, to learn. Um, as far as networking, you would certainly do those when you if you do go to a conference. Um, also with the Small Business Administration, they they host events, at least near me, they host events that you can go to. So you would network there. Um, I believe networking is just talking to people. So I walk my dogs every day. I talk to people. People get to know me. Maybe if you have a job already and you're not working in the health and wellness field, you just want to keep telling people what you do, have business cards that look professional that you can hand out when anywhere, you know, keep them in your car, keep them in your purse. Um, just keep them with you and you're walking your dogs, whatever. I've, I've found that I, I just get to talking to people. So really, I guess it's just, you know, taking that time to, to talk to people. Um, also setting up tables at events, for instance, at my church, we had this couple of different events. One of them was a women's event and I set up a table, um, and that one I didn't have to pay for. Maybe some of those you do. And I had, um, a basket if people wanted to put their information in, then I raffled off this big wellness, um, basket that had like some fitness things, some different nutrition things in there. Um, there's anything local, I'm all about local. So, and I think chains probably would maybe look at look at it differently. So that's why I just think local makes more sense because we would be our own small local business. So getting with a local business, such as a coffee shop, um, a brewery, there's a coffee shop near me that's a coffee shop and a brewery. And I just, you know, talking to them, they had different events going on. I asked if I could put together an event and so I did that, um, which that event was creating a health and wellness vision workshop. And um, I had to advertise it through them on Eventbrite. Um, let's see. Also, maybe yoga studios, vegan cafe. There's a vegan cafe that I go to a lot. Once again, I just talk to people. I talk to um, the manager. They, they know me there. And I've asked if I could host an event there. So it's just looking for those different opportunities. And just talking to people is, um, is what I would say for networking. That is wonderful. And I know you and I talked a little bit about VWISE. And there was a question about utilizing veteran assistance. Do you I want to speak a little bit about VWISE or any other veteran assistance um, that you might um, know about or that you've used? Yes. So I found out about VWISE when I was going through my transitional classes, and I was just so excited about it. And I knew one day when it made sense that I would go. I didn't want to not have an idea of exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to, you know, I needed a little bit more education before I decided what I wanted to do for my business. So when the time was right, um, I applied for VWISE and it's free and they have different conferences, different programs. I The VWISE is for women veterans um, and you don't have to be a veteran. You could also be a spouse. Uh, spouse. There might be, and you'd have to look at the website. I can't remember if there were other options for that, but there are other conferences that are not just for women and what that program was for the for the women veterans anyways is it was set up um through a college Syracuse University and you did three weeks of online business prep work where it wasn't being graded but it was helping you guide helping guide you along the way so you had a business plan helping you think about marketing so you know, you just did it on your own, but we also met up once a week or really every day if you wanted to. And they had different discussions, just like you do at ACHS, but differences, you're not being graded. So you get out of it what you put into it. So that way, 
you already get to know some of the participants before you get to the conference, which what I did was I made a list. I wanted to meet all the ladies that were in the health and wellness field, anything health and wellness related, you know, massage, um, aromatherapy, whatever, anything health and wellness. I had that list because I wanted to meet those people in person. And then, of course, I had my list for the Marines because there's, you know, a Marine. Um, and I walked around and I looked for those people. And the ladies, there are like, man, you were so organized. I said, hey, I was on a mission. You know, the conference, I think, was two and a half days long. You pay for yourself to get there, but you stay two nights and that is paid for. Your food is paid for. The professional photo that is on this um, PowerPoint, I had that taken there. And I just went to that last year. So yeah, it was very invigorating. I've stayed in touch with a couple of the ladies. Um, I have I have nothing but good things to, to say about them. That is wonderful. And I'm trying to get that um, website here. I think it's, um, I think this is the right one. I'm gonna put the um, the link here. Network.org. I think that's the right one. Does that sound right to you? Um, yes. There's some view wise information on there. You can also find it through um, Veterans Affairs as well. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all of that. It sounded like a really fun event that you attended that really, um, you know, uh, allowed you to do a lot of networking and meet a lot of people, like minded people. Great. So moving on to the next question here, what is one hurdle or challenge that you faced while building your business? Um, probably several hurdles. And one was what, um, I can't think of what the word is, but when building a website, I had never built a website before. I'm not very techy. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on something I didn't really need to spend a lot of money on. You know, you don't want to spend all this money on getting everything put together. You have, you don't have the income coming in to cover that. Um, I had somebody offer to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll manage your website for like $400 a month or whatever. I mean, just so there's so much out there. It's just like, well, which one do I use? You know, what platform? That's the word I was looking for. Um, so that was very challenging. And um, once again, I just talked to other people. Um, there's a young lady I know who works. She has her own small business. She does mostly personal training. I asked her who built her website, who took her professional photos. And so she gave me that information. And I had this other person build my site for me. It's very simple. I went through Squarespace and um, I decided I didn't need to have, I forget exactly what it's called, um, where you pay an extra fee to go higher on Google. I didn't think at this point in my career, I didn't need anything that big. I think it's something with an S. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. SEO. Yeah. SEO. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, but you do want to, and I do need to update mine. You do want to get, once you get your website, you definitely want a website. You definitely want, um, I say to have an LLC, but you can decide what you want to, um, if you just want to be a sole proprietor, um, you can learn all that information about what type of business you, um, decide on through the small business administration, they have very detailed classes on there that you can read through and you can call them. They will answer your questions. It's all free. So that's how I decided on the LLC. And it was very easy to get that. Um, but where was I going with that? So, oh the, oh, the website. So having your website, so that way, you know, people can at least go to something. It just looks more professional than just having an Instagram or just having a Facebook. I do have a Facebook business page. I don't do Instagram. I just don't want to buy into all the social media things. I don't personally believe in staying on the computer all the time or on apps. I think that, you know, the way things were back in the day where we actually talk to each other is just a little bit better for our health and wellness. Um, so yeah, so deciding what platform to use for my website, um, finding clients, and also pricing. And I'll tell you for pricing, what I did is I 
took some different classes through different organizations that taught me about doing that research, that market research. And I looked in my area to see how much other health and wellness coaches were charging. Um, also, if you go to the National Board Health and Wellness Coach website, at the top, it will say find a coach. And you can look up, um, so anyone that is board of, you know, board certified will be in there. You'll get a profile once you are um, board certified and they assign you a candidate ID number, which I wanted to point that out. You can put that on a resume, you know, if you want to not just do your own business. So that once again, sets you apart, you know, um, so you can look in look up these different board certified health and wellness coaches, go to their website, see what they offer, see what they're charging. That also helped give me ideas of how I wanted to put together my um, website as well. Awesome. And I wanna just, um, just speak on the one of the questions, the website that was mentioned, the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaching. That is a specific, um, uh, entity that does board certification, the ACHS's curriculum is not currently in line with. Um, you can always go to their website, the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaching. Um, if somebody wants to throw that in the chat, thank you, Sean. Um, we are though, this is very, very exciting. We are working um, diligently to get our curriculum up to the National Board of um, Health and Wellness Coaching um, standards so that we can start offering this to our students. We're at the very beginning stages of this. We don't have an exact date in mind, um, but I just want to let everyone know that we are working on that and you will get more updates as we um, have them. So um, you can definitely go to their website and see all of the information about becoming a nationally board certified coach. Um, and again, we're, we're working on um, aligning our curriculum with, uh, with theirs. So um, any questions about that, feel free to, to put it in the chat and I can always follow up with you after the webinar as well, if you want a more in-depth conversation. Uh, but thank you so much for sh sharing all of that. Um, I definitely get a lot of questions in my role about websites <laughs> and where to start with that and pricing is a big one too. Um, so I appreciate you um, going into that a little bit. So um, I believe this is our last question. Uh, please share a tip on how to promote a new or existing business. What has worked for you? And any information that you might want to share, just what it was like to be a new business owner would be really, I think, relevant and helpful. Um, I know a lot of people on this uh, webinar probably uh, wanting to be an entrepreneur at the beginning stages of that or have that as a goal. So anything that you could share about that that path for you would be really helpful. Yes. So uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to just own my own business. I wanted to make life simpler for myself. Um, I wanted to work for a company. So I had, you know, standard hours, standard pay. However, none of that worked out. Um, so I, there were just different things along my path that made me realize, okay, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. And um, it was the networking part. So I work, as I mentioned earlier, I work at um, a country club and I'm also at a resort, which encompasses three hotels. So a tip would be working in a health and wellness job, or like I said, any job in general, and looking for that opportunity, like, hey, there, I mean, that's what a business is, is you have to find something that is missing and you are the one that's going to solve that problem or you find that problem and you solve that problem. So working um, at the country club, I was teaching water aerobics and didn't get paid that much, 30 minute drive from the house. And I, I've been there almost four years now. And I just was trying to figure out why am I still going here to teach water aerobics? I want to do health and wellness coaching. Um, and I realized after um, being there for a couple of years, what the path, the reason why I was there is I ended up meeting a lady who was a member who referred me to the resorts. And I've now been at the resorts for a year teaching water aerobics and um, doing a boot camp class. And Still no health and wellness coaching, trying to figure out how can I get that put into my business, um, at least in these different areas, because 
there's a big pool of people. So that was the only thing I was going to mention. Trying to find your clients, you know, your onesie and twosie or people just trying to find those one or two people here and there. The thing is with health and wellness clients, they are not meant to be coached for the rest of their lives, right? So you're constantly needing more of a turnover of people to coach. So being in an area where you have at least, you know, 100 or more people to choose from, that makes it a lot more viable to have to find clients. So just being able to, to pull from those pool of people from the country club, from the hotels, and I worked with the fitness director, they offer personal training there. And I asked if I could offer the health and wellness coaching. And the way that they do it is for that specialty um, item, I would give the price and then the uh, country club gets 30% and I get 70%. So I never even thought like, oh, I could work somewhere and they get a percentage and I get a percentage which then again, I have to figure out how much do I charge, you know, because they're taking that percentage. So that's an idea of finding that place. Maybe it's um, a chiropractor office, a naturopathic doctor. Um, those are the two main ones. Um, usually hospitals, you would work like directly for the hospital. Sometimes it's other business owners that are not offering it through their health insurance. Uh, so it just went from, okay, started coaching at the country club. And just a month ago, I thought, okay, I've been at this, these hotels for a year. I've built my repertoire, you know, I've showed that I'm reliable and, you know, professional and this and that. So then I decided I wanted to offer to do health and wellness coaching for the employees for these three hotels. And that didn't work out because they said they could use their health insurance. And then I thought, you know, they actually have a spa there and it's a high end spa. They offer some other holistic things besides just or treatments besides just doing body wraps and massage and facials. So I actually have an appointment next week to meet with the spa manager to talk about offering health and wellness coaches or coaching to. And this would be for the. Um, hotel guests, and these hotels actually have homes that they've built around them. So the residents do come and use their services there. So it's just a very interesting concept. Um, so just looking for those those little opportunities where it's missing. The health and wellness coach piece is missing. So that's, um, that's what's worked for me. But it took a while. Yeah, as it does. And I love the idea of being on your own and owning your own business, but still being within a community um, where people can refer back and forth to each other. And, you know, I think it's important to think about entrepreneurship in that way, that it doesn't just have to be you alone on an island behind your computer trying to get clients. You can start partnering um, with other people you know, in the industry. And I think that that's um, really exciting that that's worked well for you and that you've, you've had some success with that. Um, and so we're going to move into kind of the Q&A section. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> we have a bonus question. <laughs> um, I forgot about this question. Let me go back to it here. So what is one piece of advice you would give to someone that wants to open their own wellness coaching business? Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but do you have any other advice or if um, Sean, you wanted to to chime in at all, um, any advice that you might give to somebody who's interested in this path? My number one piece of advice is to work in the field first. And it's hard to, I will tell you, I've been trying to get a health and wellness coach job since my job ended in 2020 and it hasn't worked out for me. So like I said, I've just continued on, on my own path. However, if you can, and even if it's a job that's not paying as much, but you get just so much, um, you know, you'll, you'll learn so much by working with a big pool of people, having clients, you know, where you don't have to go out and find them. So then you could just focus on the coaching part to get better at coaching. Because even once I did all of my classes, certifications, I didn't 100% know what I was doing because you don't know what it is, you know, what that person sitting in front of you was going to say. So it took me, for me at least, uh, I would say about a year and a half of coaching and I was doing part-time 20 hours a week 
um, employees uh, to really feel like, okay, I'm confident. I know how to do this. So that would be my biggest piece of advice is if you could find a place to actually work before you or, you know, maybe at the same time as, as doing your business. Absolutely. And, and I, I, and I would oh, ask. Sorry. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Sean. Please. First of all, my goodness, Colleen, you are extraordinary. Thank you so much for the time you're sharing with us. I mean, these are nuggets. I mean, these this is really incredible. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I'm so inspired. So thank you for that. Um, I, I would add to all of the incredible things. I mean, Colleen really left no stone unturned in her process for discovery, right? How she could apply the things that felt important to her in a professional setting and feel fulfilled doing that. And I, I guess what I would add to that is remember it is a journey and it, it, it does take a while. So it, you know, I, I think I dropped in the chat, you know, the importance of doing a self-assessment on your personal key, your key personal values so that you understand who you are and what you want. Because oftentimes when people feel unfulfilled, it's because of conflicts that create are created at nobody's fault, right? Because sometimes you're just with two different groups, right? You are you are a part, you're a person who uh, may align very well with a particular group. So you need to find your group, your tribe, so to speak. Sometimes we, we used to call it that. Um, but I would also say finding your niche is really important and that does take time. I oftentimes have students who say, where do I begin? I'm like, what do I do? Because I wanna do this and this and this and this and this and this. And I say, what feels most important? And so really picking that one thing and flushing it out. And as Colleen said, experimenting with, you know, working for someone else, learning more about that particular thing so that you can gain your confidence to take the next step because it is a, it's a journey for sure. But I would add to just all of this, the importance of finding your niche, the thing that you do, if you boiled it down to the most basic level, what do you want to do more than anything else? Because these are the things that if you get them on your website, and you get them in your messaging, it makes you searchable by people in the world. You know, they are looking for someone who does that one thing that you said that you can help them do, right? So that's all I'll say about that. But again, Colleen, wow, this is like extraordinary stuff. Thank you so much. I agree completely. And I'm so grateful to both of you for, you know, sharing your experiences and, and this wisdom with us all. Um, and this kind of brings us to the live Q&A session. I know we have not um, had a chance to go over everyone's questions. So I kind of want to filter through the chat a little bit here. Um, but based on everything we've talked about so far, if you have any other burning questions, go ahead and um, throw those in the chat and then we'll have about, oh, about 15 minutes to kind of uh, field those questions um, and get you resources that you might need as well. Um, and I'm gonna go through here and just see. So Damari asked, um, whoever wants to answer this, uh, how did you first start offering services like the grocery shopping and pantry cleaning? Was that at the beginning of, of your wellness coaching business or did you integrate that later on? Uh, maybe if you could share a little bit, Colleen, about that, uh, that'd be great. I actually did not offer that part until I took this other continuation, continuing education course where I learned um, some different things about coaching people into the kitchen, mainly uh, plant-based culinary coaching. And that's when I thought, okay. Um, and I also went back to how I learned to eat healthy. And my dad actually took me grocery shopping and he showed me different things. So I thought, well, that really makes sense. And people really have no idea. They, they look at the front of the label of things. Oh, it says gluten-free, sugar-free, blah, blah, blah. But they don't look at the ingredients. So just making it more practical. Um, yeah, so I didn't offer that at, at the beginning, just more ideas came by seeking out more education, I guess is, is really where it all came from. Awesome. Angela had asked how many people can one person coach realistically? Um, and I think that as a new wellness coach, I think that that is a very relevant question, you know, as you're kind of building your, your client base. Um, 
what has felt good for you, Colleen, as far as like your your roster of clients? Um, where do you feel the most balanced? I guess that's hard to answer because I do, you know, the group exercise, the personal training and the health and wellness coaching. Um, but when I was just doing the coaching, and like I said, that was not with my business where I was just doing coaching. Um, I guess max a day was about seven in an eight hour day, um, depending on, so initial session is an hour, follow on sessions are 30 minutes. Sometimes, you know, the session would go over a little bit. So you always had to have a little flex time in between. It depends if you're doing virtual, in person, you know, over the phone, uh, if you have to drive somewhere. So you just have to figure out um, those type of things. And also doing notes. You want to have, when I do my coaching, I actually type my notes because I can't write as fast as I type. And of course, I'm not typing every single thing, but I want to capture everything. So for me to be in the moment and still capture the big things that are important so I can give that back to them, I do type notes. And so I do have a computer in front of me, but I also believe in sitting at like a round table, um, if possible, you know, not like behind a desk just to make it more um, comfortable, comfortable setting. So, yeah, I guess about max of seven, but it just depends on the other things you want to do that day. Yeah. And I know you and I have talked about like it's it's you have to factor in the coaching hours and then all of the hours after we're doing your documentation you know, the time you put into your marketing, the time you put into, you know, getting all of, of your documents ready for the next day. So if you're seeing seven coaching hours a day, you also need to factor in at least what, two to three hours. Um, so your day can get long really fast, <laughs> right? Yes. And there are a lot of platforms now that are available that can make it easier for you where you type your notes in there, the client logs in, they can view everything. You can do your scheduling on there. You don't have to help create these. You don't have to pay for the website and then pay for the scheduling app and then pay for this and that. And there's there's actually some really good coaching tools out there because health and wellness coaching is becoming a very um, popular field. I've seen it increase definitely in the last couple of years. Absolutely. So when you use Squarespace for your website, does it also integrate a scheduling system and uh, notes? in there as well like is that all all in one with your current platform no it's not um i just started using i have to look it up i think it's called prevent preventia i think is the name of it um i'll look it up and send it to you felicia because this um this new platform that i started using which is associated with another um organization um that has the notes. You can you, you can even um, bill somebody from there, and they can pay through. Uh, I think it's called Stripe, Stripe Swipe. Um, so that is it's a very all inclusive site, and I get it included in a in a membership that I have that I pay for. Um, so I don't know how much it would cost to go directly through them, but I think that's the name of it. But I'll send it to you. So you can send that out. Great. That would be really helpful. And then I can disperse it to those of uh, on here today that would benefit from that. Um, I've heard Jane app is another good platform um, for wellness coaches that integrates all of those things into one. So Jane app is another one um, that I've heard of that uh, has, it's well rated. Um, but moving on here um, to other questions, uh, Damari asked, if you cannot work in the field or clinic first, how would you go about getting started? And one of the things that I wanted to say is part of my job here at ACHS is to do career coaching and to work with students and alumni one-on-one -on -one to be able to find employment in the area that they're seeking. Um, so if you are looking for, let's say, a remote or a local health and wellness coaching position that's employee-based where you're not you know, on your own as a as a contract employee or as a business owner, um, we could definitely do that. So definitely schedule some time with me if you want to explore options that are um, employment options. 
Um, but I don't know if anyone has anything else to add um, as far as that question about how to go about getting started, getting experience. Felicia? Yeah. Uh, let me, uh, Colleen, I have enjoyed your talk. You have been fantastic to present all of this information. Um, and let me add here, uh, especially because there's a question that has come in from Angela Belcher uh, regarding nutrition. Um, my field is integrative health and nutrition, and nutrition is a sticky field in terms of what state you are in, but obviously health and wellness involves recommending uh, a healthy diet. But this question came in, uh, how do you give nutrition advice if you are not certified? Now, first, let me say that our programs upon graduation, you can sit for the holistic uh, nutrition exam uh, offered by the NANP, which I had put that in there, uh, such that you are certified, which will help you in your state to be legally giving advice in nutrition. But as far as giving nutrition within a coaching environment, it's a matter of what you call yourself. And in many states, the terms of nutrition cannot be mixed with registered dietitians, which is a whole nother field. And But obviously, if you are calling yourself a coach, a uh, many different titles, educator. I think Sean can advise on that too. What you call yourself in your business is so important and you can still advise on nutrition as long as you're not calling yourself a nutritionist in certain uh, areas. And we have uh, resources through the NANP and we have webinars on the legalities of nutrition advice uh, within there. So I just wanted to add that to complement based upon where we're all at uh, within this coaching realm of wellness, where nutrition sits. So if you have any questions, let me know. And I'd like to add, I'm just going to piggyback on that really quick because there, there does seem to be some questions around, you know, how do we share advice and make recommendations and, and all of that stuff. And, and this is also valuable because there's so many different pathways in holistic health and you get to choose the path that works for you, whether you're a consultant or a coach, right? And they are different. I just, I want to stress that and students who have taken my class know, know these differences. But when we talk about becoming a nationally board certified health and wellness coach, one of the things that will be required of you is that you spend 75% of your time or more on the facilitation uh, of coaching. And it's not about educating your clients. So in coaching, we don't, pummel people with recommendations. Instead, we we help them elevate their mindset by showing curiosity, um, by helping them to create a framework for change. And, you know, this kind of goes back into Amanda um, Dove asked a great question. She said, what do you do to keep your own mindset healthy while walking alongside people who do not? And as a coach, one of the things that helps the most is that we remember that there is that healthy boundary, right? That we, while we are invested in our client's success, what happens is up to them. And so you are not performing <laughs> for your clients. You're not trying to get them to a result. Um, it, it's mindset training is really what you're learning to do. So I just wanted to stress that if you're considering a career in coaching, it is not consulting. But Colleen mentioned she does everything, right? She mentioned personal training and education and coaching. Um, but I know there's been a lot of questions around certification and I wanna make sure that you're prepared as to what coaching is and what would be required of you to become certified there. Does that, does that help? Is there any follow-up questions on that? So very helpful, Sean. Thank you so much for, for talking about that and the difference between consulting and coaching. Um, that is very good information and very helpful. Um, I don't know if you can expand a little bit on what the difference is. Well, you just did, you explained what coaching was. Do you have any type of kind of definition on what consulting might look like? Is that more of the educational piece? 
Absolutely. Well, a consultant is uh, the, the way to look at it like, is like this. A consultant is somebody who's paid for their expertise. So you get to hire that person to solve a problem for you or to give you best advice on, on practices that could solve that problem. And so you're paying an expert like you would pay a business consultant who can come in and teach you about profit and loss and how to pull levers in your business. A coach instead would say, what levers feel important to you? Why would you choose that lever? And what's your first step in, in pulling that lever without giving you any real recommendation? Now, that doesn't mean that a coach wouldn't brainstorm with the client around problem solving, but what happens in the session is client driven, which is very different from a consultant. A consultant is paid for an outcome. So just look at it like this. A consultant is an expert. A coach is a guide, right? So a coach is the passenger in the car, whereas the, the client is the driver right? That's, that's really, yeah, that's very good. I have to add that they are linked, okay? In other words, what a consultant does, such as a nutrition consultant, has to establish goals that are attainable. Therefore, they have to know that that client is ready to change, and maybe they can't lose 10 pounds, but in one week, it, it is reasonable for them to lose half a pound. So they do work hand in hand. I had to add that to you, uh, Sean, based upon the fact that they, a consultant does work and evaluates what, where the person is in their ability to change. And that's where we're all about in this to improve the health and wellness at all levels. So, so very good that, that we, we had this, interchange relative to it yeah and I think that being said like there there are situations like with Colleen's story where there it might behoove you to have multiple types of certifications like so that you can offer multiple services I think being very clear on what service you're offering to what client and you know being clear about the role that you have with that client is important but for instance our pft 101 class if you take that class and um, that sets you up to take the nasm exam to become a certified personal trainer maybe you want to integrate that into your health and wellness coaching business that might make sense to do that so there's a lot of different flavors <laughs> of, of business you know pathways that you can take but i love the way that sean put that and i and i really appreciate you too janet coming in and and talking more about that. These are questions that come up quite often. So it's much appreciated. Um, for those who we haven't had time to really get into your question, I want to make sure that you do, um, that we do answer your questions. So if we haven't answered your question, just know that I'm going to reach out to you directly um, and, and have that conversation with you. Um, this is what I do every day. And I work with these wonderful people like Sean and uh, Dr. Ludwig. And so if there's something I can't answer, I can always refer back to them if needed. Um, but for time's sake, I'm going to move on a little bit here and just talk about the courses that we offer here at ACHS that are directly transferable to this path of being a health and wellness coach. Um, so the Holistic Health Consulting and Business Skills class, that's NAT 306. Um, as well as the wellness coaching communication skills class, which is NAP 515, that's a graduate level. Those are extraordinarily helpful classes. Sean, I'm sure could talk more about this, um, but we are offering both of these classes in the accelerated term um, starting October 26th. So if you haven't taken these classes yet and you wanna build that into your program, definitely talk to your academic advisor. If you're an alumni and you're interested in taking these courses, the admissions information is right there on the page. Um, reach out to them, they can help you take a single course. Um, but we offer multiple programs in health and wellness coaching, including the MS in health and wellness, the graduate certificate in health and wellness. Um, we do have a couple of undergraduate certificates as well. Um, something really fun that we have coming up on September 27th is an uh, on-campus, for those of you in the Portland area, CE class that's going to be um, instructed by Dr. Amanda Latin for aromatherapy care for the caregiver course. Um, I think it's important to note, Colleen talked a lot about continuing education and staying up to date on trends and continuing. It, the education doesn't stop right when you, you know, finish your program. You have to stay up on, on top of the newest 
um, you know, research. And, and so taking CE classes is really helpful. Um, micro credentials that we offer here are self-paced. Um, they do upskill, you know, and, and give you more um, in-demand skills that you can add to your professional uh, title. Um, and some of those that we offer are the aromatherapy micro credentials. We have a cannabis and psilocybin mushroom specialist credential. And then for health and wellness coaching specifically, the certified dietary supplement professional and the functional blood chemistry analysis are very popular. Um, because those kind of go hand in hand with wellness coaching. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can find that on our website. Uh, but those are self-paced programs that are um, really beneficial and you can kind of do at your own pace in conjunction with your other classes. Um, and final thoughts, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say thank you enough to all of our panelists today, Colleen. Um, your insight was just absolutely phenomenal. And I, I really thank you for giving back to your community and, and sharing your journey with us. And I'm so excited about all your success. And if anyone wants to visit Colleen's website, Colleen, if you could put that in the chat, I would definitely encourage you to look at her website. She's got great information on there. Um, and again, stay connected with me. I can help you with all things career coaching. I even do resume review and things of that nature. So please um, don't hesitate to reach out. We have tons of resources and support here. Um, and thank you again to Sean and Janet. I really appreciate your insight um, into this. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and a good start to your fall. Thank you all. It was great being here. Yes, thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Absolutely. So good to, to see you all. Enjoy your day. Aloha. Aloha. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.